The heliocentric model is a fact. It has been confirmed to such a degree that it would be perverse to withhold provisional assent. And yet there are those who deny it, saying that instead of the Earth and the other planets orbiting the Sun, that the Earth is the center of the universe, and that everything revolves around it. These same people say that the Earth is not a globe, but a flat disk. This is not just incorrect, it is perverse. Even in ancient times, people knew that the Earth and Moon were spherical. The ancient Greeks, for example, watched how the phases of the Moon correlated with the angle in the sky between the Sun and Moon. When the Moon was nearly 180 degrees from the Sun, it would appear fully lit. When it was 90 degrees from the Sun, it would appear half lit. And as it approached the Sun in the sky, the lit portion shrank away to nothing, in just the way that it would if the Moon was a sphere reflecting the Sun's light. When the angle between the Sun and Moon reached a full 180 degrees, the full moon would be eclipsed by a circular shadow. It stood to reason that with the sun and moon visibly on opposite sides of the earth, it was the earth which was casting this shadow. It was just what we would observe if the earth was a sphere. By observing shadows cast on the earth, they were able to work out the size of the spherical earth. By observing eclipses of the moon, they were able to work out the size and distance of the moon. And by observing how the phases of the moon correlated with the angle between the moon and the sun, they were able to roughly estimate the size and distance to the sun. The philosopher Aristarchus, having worked out that the sun was much larger than the earth, even suggested that perhaps it was the center of the world and not the earth. All of this was worked out thousands of years ago with observations that anyone can make using simple tools and applying basic math that we learn in high school today. Fast forward nearly 2,000 years to the brilliant duo of Tycho Brahe and Johannes Kepler. Kepler used Brahe's extraordinarily precise observations of the planets to work out that the long-held belief that their orbits were circular was false. Only when he discarded his preconceived notions about how the planets must move was he able to find a mathematical model that accurately described their orbits. It was Kepler's laws of planetary motion that really put the last nail in the coffin of the geocentric or Earth-centered model of the world. The math simply did not work with the Earth at the center. What Brahe observed was just what we would expect to see if the planets orbited the Sun according to Kepler's laws. The orbits were explained and refined by Isaac Newton's law of universal gravitation, and further explained and refined by Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity. By the mid-20th century, we had the technology to measure and predict the positions of the Sun, moon, and planets very precisely. Then came the invention of radar and rocketry and lasers and atomic clocks. Today we have the ability to put scientific instruments in space and look up close at the planets and look back at the Earth measuring positions, distances, and times with astonishing precision. All of these observations precisely agree with what we'd see if Kepler, Newton, and Einstein had it right. The weight of the evidence now is simply overwhelming. It has been confirmed to such a degree that it would be perverse to withhold provisional assent. The heliocentric model is a fact.